and they're also willing to spend money around various proxies and, and factions. And it's been proven that proxy groups are extremely effective in, against combating ISIS, and uh, which is why we should prioritize working with Iran instead of negotiating the nuclear deal because we want to stay on good terms with them. Because once, if we do stay on good terms, with them, or if we don't, if we prioritize this over the nuclear deal, we're making sure that the problem of ISIS is being solved. And what we're and I've clearly shown you how working with Iran would be the most effective because Iran is an extremely effective actor in solving the crime that is ISIS. And, um, additionally, they're willing they were willing to provide rockets, explosives, machine guns, sniper rifles, rocket propelled grenades, and other small arms in against ISIS. So they're really involved in this military effort, and they've been proven to be way more effective than America. America has the huge anti-U.S. sentiments, which is why we shouldn't, which is why Amer having America directly send their own things would not be as effective as working with Iran. Uh, to sum that point up, ISIS is a bigger threat than Iran. Okay, um, also. Um, there was a, okay, um, okay, um, so there's also another point which I see in them that stated, or another comment I see in them that stated that even if, um, even if Iran does have nuclear weapons, they're highly unlikely to use them. Which, so, which is why prioritizing the nuclear deal would not wouldn't be extremely necessary at all because it's there are they're more most likely not to use they're more they have no reason to be using them and stuff. Um, they have no incentive to use nuclear weapons in aggression because doing it against Israeli or American targets would gain Iran little and it would cost them a lot of money. So they would just be so. Um, yeah, additionally, states with nuclear weapons tend to face less hostility from the Pope. Okay, um, anyway, from this point, you can clearly see that uh, nuclear weapons, if Iran were to have nuclear weapons, it would be okay. Because they're highly unlikely, they're highly, yeah, it's highly unlikely that they will use these weapons in aggression. We also shouldn't piss them off because we need to prioritize working with them. And if they're pissed off at us, they probably won't work with us. It would be very bad because we need to focus on the problem that is ISIS. My partner will go over this more, but go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, please come to the front office. Your meal has arrived. Mr. Johnson, the main office, please. I was. I talked about the thing. Wait, first is this are you going to order us or not? I need it. No, I need it. I don't. Just order yeah, yeah, but Marla, like, couldn't she just reference that? Well, yeah, but it's not my job. My job's supposed to be stapling papers and writing things. All right, let's go. Hey, you should write a bio. I should have you guys write. Thank you for not making me sad. I like your bio. I like your bio. As a brief off time roadmap, I will be going over my opponent's case, reviewing it, and on to the next. Time starts now. As the first speaker of the negation team, I strongly negate today's resolution that the U.S. federal government ought to prioritize working with Iran against ISIS over stringent enforcement of the nuclear deal. Um, 
you would like to redefine nuclear deal as um, curbing nuclear capabilities but not completely removing them? Because I don't think this was quite clear in this. So are you basically talking about the nuclear deal that's already in the status quo? Um, yes. Um, as I think that was quite clear in my the affirmative definition. So they claim that ISIS is a more immediate threat, that ISIS is bad, working with Iran would be effective against ISIS, and that they were unlikely to use these nuclear weapons. We would like to refute this saying that nuclear bombs, once they are used, kill tens of thousands of people instantaneously. When the atomic bombs were dropped in World War II, um, something like 215,000 people died. The number of people who have died from ISIS so far is 170,000-ish. So these nuclear weapons, if they are deployed, has, would have a way far, far, far greater impact than ISIS does because these effects of radiation would persist for a long time. Many people would be affected. If these nuclear bombs are so bad, why would would use these nuclear bombs because that's what human beings do. We go to war, we do stupid things. Anyway, um, they claim that ISIS is bad, which of course we'd agree with, but that we do not necessarily have to be working with Iran against ISIS. So I'm going to jump to the second to um the next second contention here, which is that we can pursue other countries in the fight against ISIS. Um, we are not, we do not exclusively have to go to Iran for help in this matter if they don't want to cooperate with us on the nuclear deal. According to statistics on global firepower, Turkey, for instance, is um, ranked 10th worldwide while Iran is 23rd. Saudi Arabia is 28th worldwide. We could pursue countries like Turkey, Saudi Arabia, other countries in the Middle East, NATO, have them join in the fight against ISIS instead of Iran. Um, they claimed as part of their argument that we want to stay on good terms and that Iran would be unlikely to use nuclear weapons. However, we would like to argue that even the threat of nuclear weapons hanging in the air would undoubtedly cause tension between countries. We saw this in the Cold War. I mean, U.S. and the Soviet Union never actually fired any nuclear weapons, but just the mere threat of it hanging in the air strained relations between the two countries and made them unlikely to cooperate, which could happen between U.S. and Iran if we still have problems or issues about the threat of nuclear weapons, which would only make it more unlikely that Iran would help us in the fight against ISIS if we have bad relations. So um, in making sure that problems about nuclear weapons are resolved, we would actually help that Iran would stay loyal to us in the fight against ISIS. And on to the neg case's first contention, which is that the nuclear deal is good and that nuclear weapons have unlimited destructive power. Uh, the deal would limit the potential production of nuclear weapons, which is good because as we have stated, these nuclear weapons have capability, capability for mass destruction that will that have the potential to, wait, to take way more many lives than ISIS would ever have the power to do. Um, so on the grounds of magnitude, clearly nuclear weapons have a far greater impact than, um, than ISIS. And with all the instability in the Middle East, um, as we go into the future, it may become more likely that these weapons may be deployed if we don't do something to um, limit the production of these weapons. So, yeah, and that would only increase conflict in the Middle East, perhaps 
lead to the rise of more terrorist groups as there are people seeking to exploit this conflict. So if we let this, if we let nuclear weapons continue to be there, um, potentially, we could increase uh, conflict and we could be dealing with threats far greater than ISIS. So in summary, because nuclear weapons have unlimited destructive power and because we could ask other countries to ally with us against ISIS, I strongly encourage you to vote now. Okay. Magnitude and all their impacts 
likely to happen, as I've stated a few times before in the past 20 seconds. <laughs> um, they... Oh my god. What? Okay, so it's already very unlikely to happen, because they have no incentive to use it. States with nuclear weapons tend to face less hostility from opponents. Be in a short of ISIS. And prevail more often in their crises with non-nuclear states. So they talked about tensions. To clarify, we only have one contention. I'm not sure what this one is. So I'm just gonna move on. Wait, no. <laughs> As a member of the negation team, I strongly negate today's resolution that the U.S. federal government ought to prioritize working with the law against ISIS over extreme enforcement of the nuclear deal. As a brief version, I'm first going to be addressing you for me. <laughs> and 
it addresses the engagement space. All right, let's jump right in. So their first contention, and their only contention, is essentially about how like um, ISIS is a more immediate threat, right? And so what the, what the mediation team said in our first speech is that that once nuclear bombs are used, people, like thousands of hundreds of thousands of people can die in an instant. And what does the affirmative team say? Well, oh, it's not unique because there are nuclear bombs in the status quo. Okay. Should we talk about Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Do we need a history lesson on that? Okay, anyways, so essentially, I mean like, guys, nuclear bombs do kill them, do kill people, and they were used as an instrument of war, and we'll take your question later if I have time. Anyways, um, the thing was, no, we haven't had a nuclear war yet, but the thing is, even if we don't have war, we can still, I mean like, wait, no, they were used in war, but the thing was, you don't need like, people throwing bombs back and forth to kill a bunch of people. Like, this made more sense in my head. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay, moving on to address. So they've, they've been talking about how like working with Iran is extremely ex effective. They've, they haven't even, okay, literally they haven't really told us what Iran has done besides like, War plans somehow doing something. Yes, yes, you just talk about weapons too. We don't care about that. Um, really, uh, they haven't really shown us any like tangible effects. How many lives? Has, how many tangible lives has, has the Iranian efforts against ISIS saved? What have they actually done? Have they stopped destruction? Have they done anything useful at all? How can they be useful to the United States, like alliance and whatever the the, the coalition of countries are going to, like the anti ISIS coalition? Yeah, they don't have any warrants or any proof at all of how this is actually effective, how, how Iran can actually be useful and effective in the alliance. Um, okay, so they've, they've also been saying how like, oh, Iran is highly likely to use its nuclear weapons. What is the warrant here? They have no evidence for you, Judge. They're just not telling you like, they're not, they're, they're, they're literally just like, oh yeah, they're gonna not use their nuclear bombs because I say so. That's, that's their reason, that's their reason, Judge, right? And so, what my partner said to this in her speech, first speech, I will take your question later. I am trying to speak to you. Okay. I just want to clarify something. No. No. You're not going to listen to my opinion. No. You already said your opinion. All right, anyway, so my partner said in her speech that even the threat of nuclear weapons causes a lot of tension. And she mentioned a historical example of the Cold War. The affirmative team says, somehow brings up this idea that there's going to be less tension. <laughs> what warrants do you have? You have none! <laughs> okay, um, okay, really, if you think about it this way. Okay, so, I have a gun, right? Doesn't that make you feel uncomfortable? Like, I have a gun and I'm like holding it, right? Doesn't that make you feel uncomfortable? So what if that pushes you to go get a gun? Doesn't, does that really make me feel, does that make you feel less uncomfortable? I still have my gun. You have a gun now, so I also feel uncomfortable. So now we've got some even more tension. There is no decrease in tension. It's just not right. And they, they didn't mention anything about the historical example at all. The sort of historical example of the Cold War, where tension did increase. Do so they have a historical example of where like uh, where where somehow tensions did decrease? Okay. We've got to address the negotiations of the case. Um, so our first contention is that the nuclear deal good and nuclear weapons have, uh, really have destructive power. Okay. No. <laughs> no. You put it to two minutes. No. Right, so, what they, so what the affirmative team said is that it's already, that basically, um, it's already happening and somehow, are, and they're, they're arguing that ISIS, oh, yes, they should be arguing that ISIS is <laughs> right? So they said that somehow it's probably very unlikely to happen and, um, Impacts on like states with nuclear weapons prevail in their conflict. Examples, warrants, please give me all of them in your final speech. I would like to see them very much. Um, <laughs> um really? Okay. So yes, the nuclear deal deal is already happening in the status quo. What are you trying to say? Like, what is the point here? Yes, it's already happening in the status quo. That's why we're arguing for yes, let's enforce the deal. Like what was their point here? What was their reputation? They really have no reputation. Um, okay, second contention, or our second contention, was that um, <laughs> we can use other countries to fight <laughs> ISIS, right? So we're saying that there are a lot of other countries out there that can ally with. Now, what the affirmative team said over here is that um, working with Iran is important because we have a 
common thread. We should not be thinking about the deal. So we should be picking up weapons of mass destruction? Oh, you know what? Okay, fine. Fine. Let's, let's not. Let's not. All right. Okay, they talked about how, like, we can work with other countries. Okay, that was not the point here. The point was, we're not going to be working with Iran. We're going to be looking at these other countries as alternatives. And so the affirmative team just says that, oh, we're just going to, like, take all of these countries plus Iran. No! We're trying to tell you the disadvantage of working with Iran, and that's why we're looking to other alternatives instead of Iran. And so for these reasons, I struggle. Do you have time now? I have no more time! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had time for two minutes. Maybe <laughs> your time wasn't even up. Do you have time to take oh, my question now? No, no, no. no. Judge. <laughs> Judge. Okay. 
So as the final speaker of the affirmative, I strongly affirm to my resolution that the U.S. federal government ought to prioritize working with Iran against ISIS over stringent enforcement of the nuclear deal. So in this entire debate, we've seen a huge debate, or we've seen a huge conflict over uh, which, over two things. One, whether or not nuclear bombs should, or one, ISIS, two, nuclear bombs. And we haven't talked, we haven't talked a lot about the nuclear deal itself, which is actually the negation team's burden in this debate. And if the negation team isn't going to do this, this is actually taking away from the fairness and education of this debate today, Judge. So if you're not, because they haven't done their side of the debate, what are you doing? Will we stop? Please stop. <laughs> um, they're taking away from the fairness and education because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and instead they're just going defensive. Actually, now. You feel like talking about like how it's bad that like you you're running it. Okay. Is that fine? And the only reason why I'm running this right now is because it's because um it took us two speeches to figure it out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, because the first speech you know what, the first speech we got there, we're gonna bring it up in a second. This is taking away from the greatest education of the debate because they're not doing their side, they're not doing their part. Um anyway, moving on to voter issues. So first voter issue is that of um, impacts. So the probability that impacts um, the probability that ISIS is going to act that ISIS is going to kill a lot of people is actually extremely likely because it's happening in the status quo versus Iran and nuclear weapons. So their only the only offense to this was that um, this can cause tensions. I'll be going over this I'll be going over this later, but essentially we need to focus on ISIS right now because even though there are tensions, there there will be tensions if tensions without the nuclear deal, there still will be there still are tensions between countries in the status quo. And that's not a reason why we shouldn't prioritize ISIS over these. Anyway, time frame. Right now. This is happening right now. Does, I, does Iran have nuclear weapons? No, not right now. So <laughs> ISIS is happening right now. You need to focus on ISIS. We're killing a lot of people right now. Millions of people are dying, or thousands of people are dying as we speak. This is really bad. Stop taking pictures of me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, also, time, wait. Magnitude. There's no, there's no point. Okay, magnitude. Um, ISIS is killing a lot of people, like a lot. And they're also, they're all, like I said, they're also getting, they're also, they also have killed people internationally, not only in the Middle East. They killed people from Japan, America, American citizens. They killed American citizens. Amazing. Wow. Rocket science. Okay. Um, second, second voter issue. So we talked about all the problems of nuclear war, but ISIS is a war. It's a war. It's a war of on terror. Um, it's happening right now. It's really bad. If the negation, the negation team might have said that they agree that ISIS is a bad thing, but we need to focus on ISIS over this nuclear deal. Because what's the point if we're gonna if we're gonna stop them from having nuclear weapons when everyone's dead because ISIS has taken over the world? Okay, the, you know, the negation team is clearly clearly has not thought this out in their head. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you gonna disregard ISIS? Are you gonna disregard the unjust killing, rape, and whatever the heck they do of people, innocent people in the Middle East? This is really bad. Okay, anyway. Also, they argued that we didn't have a lot of evidence to our points. However, I did mention that, uh, oh shoot, I have a couple of them. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, the pro um, Iran Iranian proxy groups have been, ex Iranian proxy groups have been, some, or according to CNN, have been one of the most effective ways in stopping ISIS. They said that we didn't have anything to back up our points. Well, this is clear evidence, and from CNN, we clearly backed this up. It was on the floor, I, on the floor, I said in my first speech. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on over there. Also, history. The world has changed since the, Soviet, since the Cold War, since World War II. Things have changed. People are not going to drop nuclear bombs on each other simply because they know it's going to happen after the because they know the repercussions. They know people are going to die not only on the other side that they want to kill, but also on their own side. Why would they do this? This is mutually assured destruction. And anyone in any country with the right brain, even if they're stupid, they wouldn't drop nuclear bombs on each other. We see North Korea as a prime example. North Korea has nuclear weapons. They haven't dropped a bomb even though they made multiple threats on us. And even though there's tensions, it hasn't happened in the status quo, which is why we need to focus on ISIS and we need to focus on Iran. Because we prove that Iran is effective and we also prove that um, we also proved that the nuclear deal is uh, not sh less important than that of ISIS. Because ISIS is more pressing matter. This is happening right now. Um, okay. Oh, so I'm out of time. So <laughs> that was pretty fabulous. If I do say so myself. All right. Should I start? Sure. Okay. Um, okay, I think we kind of had this
this problem yesterday as well. Uh, with these types of topics where you guys are putting two different things together, you're not talking enough about why we can't do both of those things at the same time, right? Yeah. So we're really comparing. Right. So the implication is supposed to be that we can't do both of these things at the same time, right? Um, I mean, sometimes the neg can kind of argue that you can do both. 